Hello, God bless you. Welcome to our daily video where we take a daily look at the Bible verse. You know we all get hungry and need to eat and feed our physical bodies, but just as importantly, we need to be feeding our spiritual bodies. We feed our spiritual body by getting along with God, praying, and reading the Bible. You can read a physical copy of the Bible, but if you cannot see to read the Bible, or you do not own a physical book, then you can read the Bible from a free Bible app on your device, from one of the various free Bible websites, or download a free Bible program on your computer. But it is so very important to read the Bible for yourself, to feed your spiritual body. This spiritual food will strengthen you and help you to face any and every trial, tribulation, temptation, and struggle. In these daily videos, we give you a verse of the day or an appetizer, as I like to call it, along with some discussion, which I pray will lead you to want to dust off your Bible and read the Bible for yourself. Read the verses before and after. Just finish the chapter and feast on this living word. Like I always say, read the Bible for yourself. Don't take my word or anybody else's. Read the Bible for yourself so you will not be deceived. I am just a person like you are. I am in no way special. I do not have all the answers. No one does. I don't care who they say they are. Pastor, a teacher, evangelist, prophet, seer, it does not matter. They do not have the answers that you're looking for. Only God does, and you will only receive your answers through prayer and by reading the Bible. And with all the misinformation and deception in this end time world, this Bible is the only truth that we have. So let someone else tell you what the truth is. Read the Bible for yourself. Do not rely on someone through TV, radio, internet, or a physical church to tell you what is in the Bible. No one can even scratch the surface of what is in the Bible. Hollywood cannot even match the stories in this book. So read and discover the stories for yourself. Today we're looking at Matthew 4, 19 and 20. And he saith unto them, Follow me, and I will make you fishers of men. And they straightway left their nets and followed him. Jesus just spoke, and the two men, Peter and Andrew, obeyed. These men were just ordinary men. They had no degrees, only the call of God upon their lives. And when the call came, they did not hesitate. You know, we can take a lesson from these. So many times, when it feels like we're getting called, we hesitate. We try to finish the job we have at hand before we answer. These men just dropped everything and followed Jesus. This call that Jesus made to these two men was to work with him. They had to give up their comforts of home and even the living that they had were making for an uncertain future. This call brought them out of the worldly into the spiritual. These men were strong and it takes a lot of muscle to pull the fish in from the nets. But Jesus was about to make them spiritually strong. They would face more hardships as ministers of the word than they did as fishermen. Jesus called both of them to follow him. It is impossible that they expected Jesus to call them. They knew that Jesus was not asking them just to go for a walk. They realized that they were agreeing to complete change in their lives. And they were ready for it and immediately they left their nets and went with Jesus. Jesus came upon them and called them and they all followed him. They immediately responded to the call. And that's what we need to do. You know I mean when we feel like the Lord's called us. We need to straight away leave. Because when Jesus tells us to follow him, the call of salvation or the call of ministry, whatever it may be, we need to be like these men and Peter and Andrew and James and John and just forsake everything and follow. You know, a lot of times, you know, a lot of people are worried about giving up something. They're worried about it being hard. Well, uh, Jesus, if you want me to Surrender my life to you. Do I got to give up this activity or that activity? He just says, follow me. That's why I always say you don't have to give up anything. You don't have to stop doing anything. 
just when you feel the Holy Spirit tugging at your heart that what we talk about may be real then just follow him he will tell you what he didn't want in your life you don't have to give anything up you don't have to do any special thing there's no rules there's no magic do this or that you just trust in what Jesus did for you a lot of people worry is it going to be hard you know because a lot of people they get mocked and ridiculed for being a Christian he just says follow him so that's what we got to do no matter what goes on just trust Jesus and what he did and follow him you know, a lot of people say well if once I get financially secure I'll go to Jesus just follow him a lot of people say well I got to give up an addiction first just follow him whatever it may be that you're going through whatever may be keeping you from accepting Jesus right now just follow him don't wait till you finish your task that you have at, at hand and this now more than ever because as we've been talking about since October 7th spiritual implications are going on with this war we are seeing people that are supporting supporting terrorists they're supporting rape and murder and beheadings and burnings and kidnapping people thousands of miles away who have no connection to Israel are still making the stance supporting terror so it may be hard for people right now people in their family are supporting terror and you may be the only one who is supporting God supporting Israel it'll be hard just follow Jesus because as I said we are seeing 2020 we started seeing how the world was testing how much can we control people don't go to church take this stand here wear that then there was this this grow of evil that has started growing people mutilating their bodies and different things yet at the same time these people hated people who lived ordinary lives you know if you didn't mutilate your body or think you were a tree or whatever it may be they hated you because you didn't want to be something other than what God created you to be. Started teaching in the schools. You become something else and don't even tell your parents. But now we're seeing with this war, just full out battle of good versus evil, light versus dark, God versus Satan. We are seeing people who are going to choose the Antichrist, the people who will choose the Christ, Jesus. So right now, it's so important to follow Jesus, not to weigh the options. The options are life or death, good or evil, dark versus light, peace versus torment. Because we will all live forever one way or another. You're either going to live forever in peace with, in heaven or forever in torment in hell. So don't listen to me. Just seek it for yourself. Just say, Jesus, I don't believe in you. Prove to me that you're real. That's all you got to do. You talk to Jesus yourself. And you will see that we all will live forever. Either in torment or in peace. There is a cost to follow Jesus. You will forsake your comforts. The comforts of home. The comforts of everything that you... But you are striving for something better. That's why we give the gospel at the end of our video. Because I want you to know the peace that we have that even if we have hardships in this life we know that there's better coming you know there's a lot of uncertainties in this world a lot of people are uncertain about a lot of things we are not we who believe who truly surrender to Jesus we have certainty things in this world may, may be uncertain we may not know if we'll be able to eat tomorrow we may not know if we'll see, live to see tomorrow but we know the certainty of that our life at the end of this life is going to be so much better. You may intellectually know who Jesus is. You may know what he did on the cross. But you need to have a personal relationship. You need to have to know Jesus personally. You need to talk to him to get to know him. You need to pray and read your Bible. I want to introduce you to Jesus right now. And like I said, you don't have to give up anything. You don't have to do some certain thing. There's no rules. 
A lot of people like to give you ABCs of salvation or a sinner's prayer. Those are just a template of how to cry out to Jesus. They're not a step-by-step -step do it this way. There's no five-step program or nothing like that. You just sincerely believe in what Jesus did for you. And I'm going to tell you what Jesus did for you. Jesus is coming soon to take us home in the rapture. And the requirement to go to heaven to be raptured is that we must be absolutely perfect and without sin. But not one of us is without sin. None of us is perfect. Everyone has sinned against God. And we all deserve God's punishment. And we are all destined to face eternal judgment and separation from God, which means hell. We all deserve to go to hell because of our sin. We can't earn our way to heaven. We cannot be a good enough person. So whatever you might say, well, I never killed anybody or nothing like that. It doesn't matter. You can't be a good enough person. You can't earn your way to heaven. There's not enough good deeds you can do. You can give every, every cent you have to charity and it ain't going to be enough. Because of our sin, we don't even deserve to go to heaven. Sin creates a, a wall that separates us from God, but Jesus knocks down that wall. That's why Jesus is the only way to heaven. That's why we must receive him into our life as Lord. He is the only one who lived a perfect, sinless life. And because he, had a, he lived in this world perfectly, he became the substitute for our sins. He took us, our sins on himself. And Jesus loves us so much he left eternity. He came to this earth in flesh and blood. And he took on our sins and died on our behalf. And he prayed the price for us to go to heaven. With his blood that he shed on the cross. That covered our sin debt. Jesus literally took our sins. And nailed them to the cross with him. And those sins died with Jesus on the cross. Then Jesus was in the tomb for three days and three nights. And he rose again from the dead. Proving that he was God. He wants to save you from the penalty of your sins. And give you eternal life. His blood is your ticket to enter into heaven. And, but you must individually receive him into your life as Lord. You have to forsake all. Just like Peter and Andrew here and just follow him. Don't, don't question, well, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have to stop doing this. or just, just follow him. It's not enough to just believe in Jesus with your head. You must believe in Jesus with your heart. And if you sincerely believe and surrender your life to Jesus, meaning you're not saying words to please someone, you're not looking for a get out of hell free, free card. You just really believe in what Jesus did for you on the cross. And you truly want to live for him now. Then you'll be saved. This is Jesus' free gift to you. And all you have to do is accept it. You can't earn it. You don't deserve it. But God loves you enough that he made a way. And we always follow the gospel. The warning of Jesus is in return. Because right now you can personally know Jesus. But one day soon and how soon we don't know. But complete hell on earth will come. We can see it coming. The world is getting darker by the minute. Like I said, we have these pro-rape, pro-murder. You know, these Nazi terrorist-loving people who just want to wreak havoc, vandalize the world around them. Just want to watch the world burn. The Bible predicts all this will happen. But I want you to know Jesus personally before all hell breaks loose. Because right now you have two options, the easy way or the hard way. Because right now, before the rapture, before the tribulation, we're under the age of grace, meaning right now it's the easy way out. To come to Jesus, all you have to do is sincerely believe in what Jesus did for you on the cross. And surrender your life to him. And accept Jesus' free gift, that free ticket into heaven. But after the rapture, after the tribulation starts, the age of grace will be over. That'll be the hard way option. You have to do more than just believe in Jesus. You'll have to die for Jesus. But I love you and I don't want that for you. So right now before the age of grace is over. Well you still have time to just accept it. Turn to Jesus. Straight away. Immediately. Leave. Whatever is holding you back. And follow Jesus. You know many have differing opinions on the rapture. And we're not here to argue about the timing or the reality of the rapture. These theologies really don't matter. But one thing is for certain. We're not guaranteed tomorrow. We're not guaranteed our next breath. And even if we are here to see some of the hell that's coming, who knows how long we'll be able to survive. But know this, one day millions will disappear, along with all the children all over the world. And when you hear that all these have vanished, know that no matter what is said, because based on what we're seeing, they may use aliens to explain away what happened. But know that if you don't see me, 
hear my voice if these videos aren't uploaded, if all the children around the world are gone, along with millions of others, know that Jesus took us home in the rapture. Now I'd like to give you the gospel in more detail, and if you don't know Jesus personally, please take the time to get to know him. Forsake everything and follow him today. Why you still have the time? Because the age of grace is about to close. And when that door shuts and the tribulation begins, the hell that we see on the news will be our reality times a million. So please turn to Jesus today. So if you got to this point and you're still listening and you don't know Jesus, now I'm not talking about knowing who Jesus is. I'm talking about knowing Jesus, being in a relationship with Jesus, where whatever sorrow, struggles, burdens, trials, temptations, tribulations come, you know everything is going to be all right. You're going to get through it, and you get through it with joy, knowing that you're not alone in it. And if you don't know that Jesus, then please let me introduce him to you today. Jesus always existed. Jesus is God. Jesus left eternity. He left his throne in heaven. Jesus became flesh. He was not an angel. He was not a ghost. He was not a prophet. Jesus was flesh and blood and bone, born of a virgin, 100% God and 100% man. He lived a perfect, sinless life. Jesus came to the earth just to die for us all. Jesus was crucified on a cross, dying a brutal death, was buried in a tomb for three days and three nights, and he rose from the dead, proving that he was God because death in the grave had no power over him. And doubting any of this is taking away who Jesus said he is, and if Jesus isn't who he said he is, then no one is worthy of salvation. Jesus is coming back soon to set up his earthly kingdom. The requirement to enter this kingdom is that we must be absolutely perfect and without sin. This is because God is perfect, God is holy, and God cannot dwell with sin. God has a standard of perfection, with that standard of perfection, there are rules, and because we live in a fallen world, we break these rules, we sin. Self-righteous people love to use the word sin and sinner as a weapon, but in reality, the sin means that we break God's rules, neither thought or action. And the Ten Commandments alone show us that we cannot completely keep God's rules. The Bible is clear that no one is without sin. In fact, the Bible says if we say that we're perfect and we don't sin, we are lying to ourselves and we are calling God a liar. Because we all fall short, we all miss the mark, we all sin. Sin creates a separation, a valley between God and man. And with each sin, that valley gets wider and deeper. That sin is there because we live in a fallen world. And because of this separation, there is a punishment for sin that has to be paid. The wages of punishment for sin is death. All of us face eternal judgment and separation from God because we break God's rules. And since no one is righteous, which means no one is perfect, something needs to bridge that valley of sin. And the only way to bridge that valley of sin and to pay the penalty for our sin is by the shedding of blood. In the Old Testament, they would use the blood of animal sacrifice. The animal sacrifice was only strong enough for one sin. Once they would sin, they'd have to offer another animal. That animal sacrifice was like bridging that sin valley with a rope bridge. Once they would sin again, they would have to offer another animal because that valley would get wider and deeper and that bridge would snap. But unlike the animal sacrifice, which is only strong enough for one sin, Jesus' sacrifice on the cross was powerful enough to pay for all sin, all of my sin, all of your sin. In fact, all the sins of everyone who believed in Jesus in his day, about 2,000 years ago, all the way to today, and all the way to the end of the world. Jesus wants to save us from the penalty of our sins and give us eternal life. When Jesus died on the cross, Jesus took our place, suffered God's wrath for us. The punishment that we deserve for our sin was poured out on Jesus. The Bible says that God gave his son to the world to die in our place. Jesus took our sins. Jesus nailed our sins to the cross with him. Jesus shed his precious blood, which covered our sins. Jesus paid God's unpayable price. 
to permanently bridge our valley of sin when Jesus died on the cross just like the song says Jesus paid a debt he did not owe but we owed a debt to God for our sin that we couldn't even begin to pay and Jesus knew because of our sin debt that we're guilty and we're the ones that deserve to die and though Jesus was innocent of death Jesus loves us enough that he died for us and not only did Jesus die for us but Jesus lives for us Jesus is in heaven right now interceding for us as our mediator testifying to God that we are his and that our sins are forgiven this is why Jesus truly is the only way to the Father he is the only one worthy to pay the price for our sin Jesus paid our sin debt in full our debt had been paid we're free to go when Jesus died he redeemed us from the bondage of sin purchased us with his shed blood on the cross redeemed means that Jesus purchased us bought us back to him this is why you cannot earn salvation by your own works whatever makes you think you're good enough whatever makes you think you're worthy of heaven you may be saying you're not perfect but you never stole anything you never killed anybody never done drugs whatever it may be if you think you can enter heaven without believing in Jesus it will fail because the Bible is clear Jesus is the door to get into heaven and if you try to enter heaven another way the Bible calls you a thief and a robber now you may be saying God is a loving God and God will not send you to hell you're right God is a loving God but the price to bridge that valley of sin is so high your works will never pay for the first brick in fact you can't even live long enough for your works to pay for the first brick if he could earn just a little bit of your salvation Jesus would not have came because if you can earn a little bit of your salvation then you can earn it all the point is you cannot earn your salvation you cannot buy your way into heaven this is why we must receive Jesus into our life as Lord God knows that we'll never be good enough to earn salvation on our own that's why Jesus came and died on the cross Jesus is the only one who lived that perfect sinless life it became the substitute for our sins and just like your works cannot buy your way into heaven and you cannot earn your way your salvation is also not based on the salvation of someone else there is no legacies to get into heaven just because mama or grandma was saved that doesn't mean that you're saved you must individually accept Jesus free gift the Bible says whoever believes in Jesus will have eternal life this free gift of eternal life is a life living with God forever in a world where God will wipe away all tears from our eyes there will be no more sorrow no more crying no more pain no more addiction no more depression no more sickness no more disease no more suffering no more feeling alone no more death the burdens of this world will be no more and if you never called on the name of Jesus don't wait till you get a point in time in your life where you feel ready to come to Jesus go to church or read your Bible don't wait till you overcome addiction don't wait till you're financially secure or whatever other excuse you may be telling yourself right now go to God right now Jesus loves you Jesus will help you through any and everything that you're going through please do not think that you're unsavable unlovable unworthy saying the seed will fall down if you come to Jesus go to church or read your Bible you may have had some self-righteous person in your life tell you that you're a sinner and going to hell that person is not Jesus and they do not represent Jesus because through our own works none of us are savable lovable and worthy the Bible says that our righteousness are as filthy rags which means our perfectness in God's eyes are as bloody rags that is why Jesus came and died for us all Jesus knows that we're not perfect so no matter what you may have been done in your past no matter what you may be doing right now I believe as long as there is breath in your body there's a chance and you have the opportunity today and if anything I have said sounds like a Jesus you want to get to know then I believe this is God calling out to you right now today telling you that you are savable lovable worthy so please do not ignore God's call turn to Jesus today Jesus loves you Jesus will not condemn you in fact Jesus will help you through any and everything you're going through 
So don't wait. Go to God now. Today is the day of salvation. And it's so simple. Just admit you're not perfect. Admit you don't have everything figured out. Admit you're a sinner. Admit you can't do this on your own, that you need a Savior. Believe in who Jesus is, that Jesus is the Son of God. Believe that Jesus is Lord. Believe that Jesus died for you, that Jesus paid for the price for your sin on the cross. And Jesus was buried and God raised Jesus from the dead. And now Jesus lives for you. So call out to God today. Confess your sins and repent. Repent means that you turn away from your sins. You have a change of heart, a change of mind. Do a 180, make a U-turn, change your behavior. When you repent, you tell God that you are sorry for breaking his rules. But more than that, it means that you see things as God sees them. And this makes you want to obey God's rules and not do anything wrong again. And you do not need someone telling you your faults, kicking you while you're down. You need someone who's going to pick you up. Just know that you're so loved, you're so special to God. When God formed you with his hands and placed you inside your mother's womb, God created you into the beautiful, unique person that you are. And God has a plan for your life. And like any good parent, God, who is our Heavenly Father, only wants the best for you. So seek him today. Jesus is coming back soon. We can see all the signs that Jesus talked about. War, sicknesses, natural disaster, it's all happening worldwide. And if you doubt that we are in the end times, we have a questionnaire in the description box called Do You Think We're in the End Times? Take the quiz. Feel free to give us your answers in the comments section. I think if you are paying attention to the world around you, you will see that we are truly in the end times. And before you say there's always been war, sicknesses, natural disasters, let me say, yes, you are absolutely right. There has. But now, as predicted in the Bible, it's all happening worldwide. And like birth pains, these end-time events are happening more frequently and more intensely. So do not wait. Do not put Jesus off. Go to God now and give your life to Jesus today while you still have the opportunity. We covered in the gospel that Jesus already paid the price. It's a free ticket waiting for you to enter into heaven. And you have the opportunity today to turn to Jesus before it's too late. This is your wake-up call. Jesus is coming back soon. Bible prophecy is jumping off the page. We do not have time to wait. The Bible is clear that we are not guaranteed tomorrow. There is no guarantee that we'll see the sun rise tomorrow. So tomorrow may be one day too late. So please turn to Jesus today. Well, I pray you got something out of the message today. If you did, give God glory. Remember that I love you and Jesus loves you. Hope you have a great day. We'll see you tomorrow, God willing, or hopefully... We'll see you in the cloud.